Buongiorno from the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm not quite sure actually why I spoke in Italian, why I greeted you in Italian. It might have been because I was watching the first Godfather film yesterday and there was a scene with um, the scene with Salazzo and Marco Corleone when they were in the uh, restaurant ordering um, the veal and uh, my, uh, Salazzo started speaking in Italian to Marco Corleone so that the police officer wouldn't understand. Maybe that's why. Or maybe because of the five boroughs that I'm in, because of the five families it could be. You never know. Well, uh, there are a number of bridges actually here uh, that, that, that connect Manhattan to Brooklyn. I think we've got Brooklyn Bridge here, you've got Manhattan Bridge, you've also got the Williamsburg Bridge. Uh, the Williamsburg Bridge that uh, takes you into Williamsburg, finally enough. And uh, I've got to say, there's a good uh, YouTuber, Peter Santanello, who I watch uh, regularly. He did a very, very good feature uh, with the uh, Hasidic uh, Jewish community from Williamsburg. But um, I'm hopefully heading that way as well. Um, so yeah, shout out to Peter Santanello, one of the great YouTubers who presents uh, good uh, YouTube videos, goes deep uh, into topics. He's done a lot of videos in America itself um, that focus on uh, parts that you don't really see, um, that, that don't really get featured, topics that don't really get covered. Uh, I think he did a, a good feature with the guy from uh, Software Underbelly as well, so that was a good uh, a good video as well so shout out to him but yeah Bro Brooklyn Bridge as I said it connects Manhattan to Brooklyn and the day itself is actually very nice it's uh, early but the sun is out and the temperature does look quite good I should have uh, left this jacket at the hotel but um, you never can tell actually in New York you can't actually tell how windy it will get especially when you are on these bridges you probably hear the cars on the uh, bridge itself, you've got cars on both sides, and if there's a pedestrianised area that you can walk on, just looking at the skyline itself, the Manhattan skyline, uh, it does uh, look fantastic on a day like this. The sky is actually clear, so I can actually see the Statue of Liberty from here as well. The camera might not be able to pick it out, it might, it might not. You can never judge these things, but you're going to have to trust me on that, that you can see the Statue of Liberty uh, from the Brooklyn Bridge. What I will say is that there are a lot of discussions with friends and colleagues about this actually, about the cost of um, being in New York. Yes, it is an expensive city. Um, things aren't cheap here, hotels are expensive, food and drink is expensive because of high rents. And you know when you're coming back from the pandemic, businesses are making up for their losses as well. So, uh, it is an expensive city, uh, but you can actually see things for free. So, the Statue of Liberty, um, if you didn't want to pay for the ticket cost, you can actually see it from the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Or we'll take the Staten Island Ferry, sit on the right hand side, and you could see uh, the Statue of Liberty from there. But on the bridge itself, this is a, I would say it's actually the best uh, looking bridge actually in this area. If you compare it to uh, the bridges such as Manhattan Bridge or Williamsburg Bridge, it reminds me a lot of, not in design or anything, but just in the stature that's given here of uh, Tower Bridge in London. We give that the same sort of stature actually that New Yorkers give the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, there's actually a uh, wedding shoot going on here as well. So one thing you do find in New York, you do get a lot of places where there's a uh, wedding shoots going on. Don't want to uh, disturb that wedding shoot. And, uh, I don't want to feature in one of the photos or ruin one of the photos. I say that tourist came in and ruined my wedding. So I don't want to be blamed for it and find myself in trouble. 
but yeah, so just heading towards, we just, we just, I just actually crossed the river now and uh, into the uh, heading into the Dumbo area, which actually stands for the Dumbo Park stands for down up under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. So the Manhattan Bridge is over there, and all that area over there is Dumbo. So it's nothing to do with the elephant, the the film or the cartoon or whatever you want to call it. It's actually an area here. I actually told one of my friends I'm going to, I might be going to Dumbo and he thought of making it up. He actually had to Google it to make sure that it's actually an area. And it did sound like a joke actually to him. You do actually get good uh, views of uh, the bridge from uh, both sides. So if you do come onto a Brooklyn Bridge, I, I see this coming here early uh, because you get a relatively empty emptier I should say bridge to, f to film on take your photographs on your Instagram photos so I suggest coming here early in the morning uh, once daylight hits I guess um, sunrise as they say yeah once it's sunrise I suggest coming down here and uh, walking across the Brooklyn Bridge I mean unless you fancy walking when the crowds are here unless that's your thing then you know fair enough um, get in amongst the crowds really but I, me personally, when it's quiet you, know, you can walk freely here, there's no one bumping into you there's no no runners that are knocking into you uh, because I guess if you're running and there's a crowd you're going to have people moving about and uh, to be fair, I haven't seen any pushchairs either so you don't really get families out here early in the morning because I doubt kids are kids aren't the easiest group to get up and ready early morning so yeah i just crossed it now just cross you can see it actually the wooden platforms are your wooden uh, boards they end and then you end up with basically concrete until you get to uh, the staircase that takes you out of um, out of this area and into dumbo itself just in the uh, area where there's the uh, manhattan bridge this actual scene Look how quiet it is. Um, this actual location is used for a lot of photos. Uh, a lot of people come here and there's, a, there's only a few here, but I was here actually a couple of days ago, uh, quite late on, and uh, a lot of people were here taking photos. Um, and uh, it's used a lot, uh, Instagram, social media, other social media platforms as well. Uh, it's actually quite a uh, famous location here, so a lot of people do come here and take um, photos on the uh, with the backdrop of the Manhattan Bridge between these two buildings. It's actually quite uh, famous. I've seen them. I've seen photos like this everywhere. And at the moment, there's only a handful of people. That, there's a group here that are taking. Uh, I don't want to film too much, but there's a group here that are taking um, photos as well. Uh, but it is quite a. Uh, famous location and to be fair it's actually free you know people say about New York being expensive it's one of the free things that you can do take a photo here and when it is free um, why not and when it's empty so I'll come here early on come here at sunrise and you will actually get a uh, decent photograph of yourself with this as the back just in uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park and this is one of the things that I say to a lot of people that New York is not just Manhattan uh, a lot of people just stick to the sites that are within the borough of Manhattan itself and there's a subway train going on top of the Manhattan bridge so you may be drowning out my voice it may be interfering with my vlog so this is the, this is the thing about uh, vlogging when the external elements interfere with you but I would say that if you are actually in uh, if your trip is in New York City remember there are other boroughs and so if you do walk down to Brooklyn or get the subway or get a taxi or whatever transport cycle or rollerblade or skate or whatever really I guess do come down into places like the Brooklyn Bridge Park because a lot of people think that New York City is just tall buildings and to a certain extent yeah that's true Manhattan has a lot of tall buildings great skyline 
uh, and so a lot of people only associate Central Park with being the only open space, but that's not true. Even within Manhattan itself, you've got Bryant Park, Washington Park, Haley Park, uh, there's a fountain in Haley Park, I might go and see that actually. Um, you've got a number of parks, there's a City Hall Park there, where my hotel is, and if you make your way into Brooklyn, there's the Brooklyn Bridge Park as well, here. So you can actually get views of uh, Manhattan Bridge, Williams Road Bridge is just a bit further down, also the Brooklyn Bridge as well. So I'd say walk down maybe, maybe walk down the Brooklyn Bridge and walk back on the Manhattan Bridge or vice versa. Um, it's worth doing, we'll walk on the Williamsburg Bridge. Like I said, you know, there's some great, um, there are actually some great places in Williamsburg because I've seen some good YouTube videos from Big Southern and uh, a few other YouTubers. That subway train is loud. That is loud. A lot of noise there. The subway is subwaying this morning. I just noticed actually here, um, where on the edge of uh, Brooklyn uh, Park, uh, it's a. Uh, just wondering actually, in the summer months, would they let you swim here? I'm not really sure. I mean, I don't know if they'd let you swim now. Well, actually, I wouldn't swim now. It's, it's freezing cold. But I wonder if they let you swim in the. Uh, in the summer months. I know um, in a few of the piers in Manhattan itself uh, they do free kayaking, uh, free canoe rides on the uh, Hudson where you're looking across to New Jersey. I know they used to do that, they probably still do actually. I'll try and find out if they still do that uh, because that is, I think that's seasonal. Uh, because I did that once and uh, I wonder if that's still going because that's actually quite a good uh, good activity to do. You know, people, people complain New York is expensive, but that's actually free. It well, was free, so I'm not sure if they do do it. But, you know, as they come across here, you get to see this for free. You know, you get to see these views for free. Actually, subway's gone now, so that noise has calmed down. And I just noticed, actually, that there's a carousel there as well in the glass casing. Um, I uh, caught a glimpse of that when I was here last and uh, I thought I must go and visit the carousel. So here's that carousel, James Carousel, 100th anniversary, circa 1922. So this fairground carousel is from 1922. It's been brought in here, preserved. I'm pretty sure they have much cake for carousels anymore in these fairgrounds. I don't think fairgrounds are the same anymore. But if you are here, it's ticket holders as well, so you've got to buy tickets for this. So it's not, you can see it free from outside, but if you want, actually even if you go inside, there's glass, glass barrier around it anyway, so it's not as if you could get on board and have a ride or anything. So yeah, just a bit puzzled by that really. If you are here, I mean, I guess it's up to you if you want to see Jane's Carousel in its 100th anniversary. If you are into your fairground rides, or if you're so devoid of things to do and boredom has hit you, I guess, um, give Jane a visit, I guess. Um, but I'll pass on that. And I'm just making the most of the morning that I have here. Because... A lot of people are missing out actually. A lot of people miss out when they just stick to Manhattan. That's actually a common thing that I've heard um, from a lot of people who've been to New York City. Uh, uh, the journey largely re revolves around um, the borough of Manhattan which actually limits you. Um, I can think of a number of places uh, that are worth visiting. Yeah, even um, yeah, a lot of people say don't go to the Bronx, it's dangerous. It is a, it's a lot of crime there, a lot of violence there. But I, I think one of the best markets actually is in um, the Bronx, Arthur Avenue. I think it's on the Italian market. Uh, and actually that Little Italy in the Bronx, I would give more prominence to than the Little Italy that's in Manhattan. So yeah, 
another thing that people miss out on Little Italy in uh, Manhattan now I would say is more touristy I passed through there yesterday and it's not the same as it was many years ago when I first visited it because back then this is when Umberto's clan house was in its original location where crazy Joey Gallo got shot um, the gangster who was a real part of the Colombo crime family he was shot outside uh, Umberto's clan house that actually was there at the time at the original location where he did get shot but that's moved as well now and um, you know a lot of the families who've owned restaurants and premises in that area have moved on elsewhere and a little Italy I would say it's a bit more touristy now and you know I guess it's um it's up to you if you want to see it uh, because it is worth seeing it's worth walking through because it's actually been featured in a number of films I think it was featured actually in all three of the Godfathers as well um, I think it's featured in the third one as well I think it was featured when um, what's his name what's the guy's name the guy who plays uh, Vincent uh, Andy Garcia where Andy Garcia shoots uh, has uh, Joey Zaza killed I think that was in uh, Little Italy I think in the uh, second Godfather where Fanucci got killed Don Fanucci that was in Little Italy as well so it's been featured in a number of films as well especially the Godfathers and uh, it's worth visiting worth seeing uh, from a touristic point of view but if you want to see the real Italy then go to Arthur Avenue in the Bronx because uh, you'll get the real flavour of uh, Italy there as well if you're into Italian food I guess you might not be 